Did you get that, Squirrely? Hi, guys. It is a gloomy, rainy, gray, yuck morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this gloomy Monday morning, March 30th, 2020. Uh, and you have found your way into the Coronavirus Chronicles, formerly known, I guess, as Collapse Chronicles. My name is Sam Mitchell. My little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, is out in the rain chasing swirlies up the cottonwood tree and is not going to be joining us because I don't want to get my socks wet going to grab him. So anyway, my little flea-bitten hound says hello from the cottonwood tree. But, uh, oh, we have a big announcement here on the collapse slash coronavirus chronicles. We just, I want to welcome as of five minutes ago our 4,000th subscriber. 4,000 people have uh, found their way over to this dark corner of, uh, is this the, the dark web of the Doomosphere? Yes, 4,000. So let's welcome our 4,000th subscriber as more and more people uh, start to wake up to the situation on the planet and of course the situation on the planet is the coronavirus so I have started this sub channel I don't know if this sub channel <coughs> is gonna last two weeks or two years uh, I guess we're all waiting to find out so I really appreciate you guys uh, sending, good Lord, how many articles uh, have, have you guys sent me uh, every day now. I do appreciate, uh, now once again guys, I, I, I cannot focus too much is what we're looking at on this channel, on Coronavirus Chronicles, is how the uh, the, this particular, the, this little hit to the economy and society uh, is going to affect global industrial civilization and using it as a snapshot as more and more of these things come around. So uh, again, if, if you're sending me, uh, people are continuing to send me articles just about how many people are going to die from the getting the coronavirus. This is not the how many people are going to die from the coronavirus channel. You can find that over at Chris Martinson. Okay? He has, Chris Martinson is the one who, down here in the Doomosphere, if you are not subscribed to Chris Martinson's How Many People Are Going to Die in the Coronavirus, uh, then go over there and join the half million people he has tuning in. But uh, we're going to look at a few other aspects and so I cannot remember, I'm sorry, the Alert Tribes member who sent me in today's Coronavirus Chronicle from Bloomberg. From Bloomberg, uh, I guess, since Mr. Bloomberg could not buy the White House like, the, uh, like some people, uh, he's back to uh, reporting the news. All right, take it away, Bloomberg. <coughs> The workers who supply the world's food are starting to get sick. Yes, uh, this could be a problem. All right, what is going on with this? Uh, poultry giant Sanderson Farms on Monday reported, this is last, a week ago, reported the first case of a worker at a major U.S. meat producer testing positive for coronavirus. The employee and six more from the Macomb, Mississippi uh, plant were sent home 
to self-quarantine with pay, yeah, I bet, but operations continued on as normal. So we have six people infected with coronavirus in a poultry processing plant. Uh, they sent them home, but they just kept right on working. This might explain why I paid 57 cents a pound for this factory farm chicken at Walmart on Friday. 57 cents a pound. There, you know, and these scare stories such as this one about the, you know, how we can expect the price of food to shoot up through the roof. 57 cents a pound for chicken at Walmart this week, guys. Explain that one. Anyway, back to the story. Okay. A few days later, <coughs> Smithfield Foods Incorporated, the world's biggest pork producer, confirmed its first positive case at its Sioux Falls, South Dakota facility. Then on Friday, beef producers in Canada and Argentina shuttered their plants after virus cases. In all likelihood, the number of coronavirus cases will keep going up at meat plants, farms, warehouses, and packaging factories across the globe. These infections speak to a growing threat to our world's food supplies. Yes, massive operations where workers pick berries together, cut meat side by side on a production line, or load food warehouse trucks in sometimes close proximity risk slowing down. Some facilities may have to shutter for cleaning and worker quarantines. Produce could end up rotting in fields if there are not enough healthy workers as, you know, harvest season uh, rapidly approaches. This is uh, Al Steely, who operates a farm management business in, in California's northern San Diego County, where he grows 250 acres of citrus, 250 acres of avocados, and 60 acres of grapes. Quote, if we cannot flatten the curve, then that is going to affect farmers and farm laborers, and we have to make choices about which crops we harvest and which ones we don't. Yes, we hope no one gets sick, but I would expect some of us are going to get the virus. Close quote. Yeah, like, uh, what, 50 to 60, if not 80 percent of you are. Okay, now Bloomberg wants to make it clear. To be clear, to be clear, the food from a plant where infections pop up does not pose any health concerns. Yes, because by all accounts, coronavirus is not a foodborne illness. So, According to Bloomberg, supplies from a farm or a production plant with, conver with confirmed cases can still be sent out for distribution, which is exactly what is happening. And guys, I happen to believe Bloomberg on this one. Uh, it is going to make no difference, but I assure you there are going to be plenty of people who are going to take that with a grain of salt, so I don't know how these panic-buying food hoarders are going to hoard food when they're absolutely terrified that more and more food is going to be coming from, from food processing plants and fields, whatever, uh, that have been handled by people with coronavirus. Are you ready? Are you done with your uh, with your squirrel control? Okay. And it is important to note 
that so far there has been no major interruptions to food supplies. Inventories of food are still ample. Well, uh, they apparently has not been to a Harry Butts grocery store uh, in Austin, Texas, but I am hearing now, uh, I saw it with my own eyes in Walmart on Friday and, and I'm hearing from other people that there is more food available this week than last week. Inventories are still ample and major bottlenecks have not yet developed in food supply chains, yes, which tend to act to react quickly to changing situations. However, there is a risk to continued production. When a worker gets sick, the employee and every person they have come into contact with has to be quarantined. That could mean limited impact in some cases, like at the Sanderson factory, where the infected individual's work was contained to one small processing table. Yes, I bet. Uh, but the more employee mingling there is, the bigger the threat to production. This is Dave McLennan, Chief Executive Offer of Cargill Incorporated, the world's largest agricultural commodities trader. Quote, what one, one of our beef plants feeds 22 million people per day, so it is vital that these plants stay open. Well, if you eat beef, uh, this is just one more reason not to eat beef. It makes no difference if every Cargill beef plant on the planet shuts down, this is a good thing for the planet. So it is not vital that they stay open, but anyway. Uh, at many meat processing plants, I have actually worked for 10 days at a factory farm chicken processing plant. Should tell that story someday. I, my job was uh, I yanked gizzards out of chicken butts that I would ram my hand up these freshly killed chickens butts. I would grab their gizzards with these two fingers and yank the gizzard out of the chicken butt before sending it down. I did this. Uh, I never counted how many. We did 82,000 chickens per day in that one factory outside of Eugene, Oregon. 82,000 uh, dead chickens we processed and it was shoulder to shoulder. Probably 300 of us working, literally bumping into each other. At many meat processing plants, workers are essentially elbow to elbow, said Thomas Hess, president of United Food and Commercial Workers Union, blah, 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 the largest private sector union in Western Canada that represents 32,000 members, mostly in food processing and retailing. Um, though employees are usually wearing protective gear, the risk of contagion is difficult to completely eliminate. Yes, I bet it is. Quoting Hess, quote, there is underlying tension, there is fear, and there is anxiety. Yes, Hess said, Calling on employers to act more diligently to keep their workers safe, uh, including by increasing the spaces between workstations. Well, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, moves like that would likely hamper output, however. It's a tricky balance for producers who are prioritizing worker safety, but also trying to meet the huge surge in demand that the virus has unleashed. 
grocery store shelves across the world are running empty as consumers load their pantries in anticipation of big lockdown periods. Just about every major agricultural and food producer is stepping up its sanitary procedures to keep workers from getting infected. <coughs> and if you believe that story, uh, anyway, please. Um, workers are covered in head-to-toe protective gear and lunch breaks are taken alone, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, what is going on w with palm oil? All right, in Sabah, the state that churns out about a quarter of Malaysia's palm oil, the local government ordered plantations and factories in three districts to shut down. All right, more good news for the planet. We have palm oil factories being shut down. Uh, after some workers tested positive for coronavirus to avoid further disruption to the palm oil supply chain, the country's industry is in a desperate bid to starve the virus, disinfecting tractors, providing workers with antibacterial body soap, and distributing face masks uh, to employees and their families. It's hard to say if that will be enough, given the real possibility of an illness-driven labor crunch. Some companies are stepping up hiring now to prepare. Uh, and this is Kellogg's uh, company uh, is bringing in additional workers, quoting, uh, here is Mary Coppola of the United Fresh Produce Association said that many food companies will be trying to aggressively hire more people, quote, we are going to see some creative solutions where folks that are being laid off are going to be able to find new opportunities that continue to support the essential critical infrastructure. So if you've lost your job handling food as a waiter or waitress, there's probably a job opening to yank, uh, to yank uh, gizzards out of chicken asses. But it may not be that easy to lure people into the field. For all their importance, these are not glamorous jobs. Yes, think of the back-breaking work of tomato pickers, the dangerous conditions at slaughterhouses, and what Many would consider the unpalatable environment of large livestock feed operations. The wages are low, benefits meager, and contributions hidden from the public eye. Yes. Uh, and now they are putting their health at risk by keeping our food flowing. Not surprisingly, there has been some backlash. Uh, unions in South America are threatening to strike over safety concerns, and some poultry workers here in the U.S. recently walked off the job. Food companies are ramping up efforts to make sure their employees feel appreciated. Yes, I bet. Uh, in some places, more unusual solutions are being deployed. Dairy producers in Vermont, for instance, recently put out a call through social media asking for volunteers to come milk the cows if farmers start feeling Ill, Ill 
a day later, more than 80 relief cow milkers had signed on as standbys. Yes, you can be a volunteer cow milker in the uh, in Vermont. I have also worked as a uh, as a cow milker before. Some of the stories I could tell about working in meat processing plants. Uh, I lasted 10 days on that one. I think I lasted about 10 days on a Baskin Robbins dairy, uh, which is a whole nother story for another day and probably another channel. Uh, but anywho, uh, that will wrap up today's coronavirus chronicle. So if you enjoyed uh, this news about how your food supply chains are getting ready to have a monkey wrench thrown in them, please uh, thumb up this video and by all means go over there and subscribe and become the 4,000 and first subscriber. To collapse chronicles uh, and coronavirus chronicles, but I gotta wrap it up because my little co-pilot Sancho Panza has the worst case of fleas he has ever had, and uh, we have to go find out if Petco has been shut down since we're going to the Bastrop, Texas Petco and not the Austin one. Maybe we can actually get some flea control for my dog. Bye guys.